right, it's Wednesday evening. Time is just about quarter, 20 past 9 o'clock Eastern Time. And we are live on Facebook doing the latest update of our video weather blog, Weather Overtime, to keep you updated as to what's going on. Fortunately, a lot quieter tonight. We're not seeing any major problems with severe weather. Again, we're showing some more signs of stability on our side of the southeast United States than what we saw over the last couple of weeks. If you remember what we had the last two Fridays and Saturdays, nowhere even close to that this time around. So, <clears throat> excuse me, looking good as we get into uh, the rest of the evening tonight and also not seeing any major problems for the next couple of days. But we do have some big changes coming up. We'll talk more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Very much on the mild side, camera a little wibbly wobbly. You can see Old Glory flapping around down there, pretty breezy from downtown Memphis from the News 12 studio buildings, the lights of Lookout Mountain up on the crest there showing up quite nicely, but we also have, again, a lot of wind coming through as the gust front from the storm system makes its way on through the area. We're not seeing anything in the way of severe weather coming through here, but we do have, again, some showers and the occasional thunderstorm, but because these things are moving into very stable air. We're not seeing a great deal of problems with this, so definitely good news for now. And we see more chances of showers and thunderstorms back to the west of us. But notice the thunderstorms from around Huntsville earlier tonight as we go back to the north and to the east. The storms just kind of do a good job of falling apart to really not much of anything else but plain showers. So good news on that for the time being. Looking a little further afield, again, we got plenty. We've had plenty of thunderstorms, but they've done a good job of falling apart. And some more showers and some thunderstorms down to our south and off to our west. This is going to be a bit of a problem as we get into the rest of the evening with wet roadways. And could be some flare-ups of some thunderstorms every once in a while, but really just not looking at too much at about 20 past 9 Eastern time at this point. Uh, the severe thunderstorm watch boxes, what's left of them back up to where I'm Pennsylvania, West Virginia, not seeing any other problems beyond that. And so far, the Storm Prediction Center, which issues those watches, usually sends out uh, messages in regards to anything happening with what is called a mesoscale discussion. It's kind of a, a chat about why things are going to happen or why they think things are going to happen from earlier. Gusty winds were possible with some of those storms, but as of right now, there are nothing, anything to report at this point in time where it comes to actual uh, current mesoscale discussions. So things are very quiet, and again, hopefully they stay that way. Rain and a few bits of thunder overnight. But we will see exactly uh, what that brings us into the overnight hours. Chip Chapman will have more in your forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Tied a record high temperature today. We managed to make our way up to the upper 80s. Did get enough sunshine. Yesterday, thought the cloud cover was going to be a little bit lower and stronger. And in this case, it was not just enough sunshine to tie us for a record high that hasn't been broken since 2010, a record low that hasn't been broken since 1881, and we were about 40 degrees above that for today, so no chance of any record lows across the area. A bit on the breezy side, though, winds, again, out of the southwest at about 34 miles per hour, so a bit of a breeze across much of the area uh, going on today. Going a little farther afield down to the south and to the west, thinking Teresa, and I hope I'm saying that name correctly, Weeks, for a nice view from Nokomis. I hope I'm also saying that correctly, Florida, just south of Sarasota, where my wife's aunt and uncle Lisa and Jody live. So nice to see a little bit of a view from way down south. And if you've got pictures, let's go ahead and see them. Drop them to us on our social media pages. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Or you can just email them to us again at pictures at WDEF.com. You don't have to send your name if you don't want to, but please give us at least a short description of what you've been, what you see in the photograph or what you were doing, stuff like that. If you want to remain anonymous, that's perfectly fine, but please send us in the pictures. We'd love to see what you're seeing and put them in the video uh, wall so that everybody can take a look and see what's going on. Currently, again, showing those showers and thunderstorms rolling on through behind this front. That's where we see the major changes coming on through. 
as we get into the next day or so with the potential of uh, some much cooler weather coming on through for the next day or so out there. Right now, the front is basically just slicing across Tennessee and making its way into northwestern Alabama. In the next day, this front is going to be settling down to the south, and then it's going to be kind of hanging around the southeastern United States, and that's going to be an irritation point for the potential of possible showers and storms developing, but does not look to be, again, a major severe weather threat coming up. So good news again on that. Let's run the numbers for you and give you an idea as to what we're looking at for the next several hours. We may see another line of storms developing back to our west overnight and then just around the western viewing area, Middle Tennessee, the Cumberland Plateau, by about 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, again for about uh, early on Thursday. Then on Thursday afternoon, clouds, speckles of showers, maybe a rumble of thunder, but that should be about all. And temperature is rather on the mild side, but here's a little bit of a preview of coming attractions, so to speak. Notice this and then notice that. That is the temperature difference between the two fronts as it makes its way into the area. So we could see again some major temperature differences for about the next couple of days. Uh, with the Easter holiday coming up, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday out there. Some big changes. We'll take a look at the seven-day forecast in just a little while. Now, as we go into around Thursday night, Friday morning, more chances of rain start to make their way up from the south. And that will give us more chances of rain toward about Friday morning, about the time the kids were at the bus stop. And then as we get into the afternoon, a reinforcing shot of some rainfall out there. Uh, doesn't look like a lot, but it does look like much cooler temperatures coming on through. Numbers about 20 to 25 degrees cooler as we get into around Friday afternoon and evening. So expecting a big change. And if you're heading out to any Good Friday Tenebrae services, you may see the potential of some showers out there and some wet roadways. So plan ahead for that. A little bit of extra time to get to where you're going uh, just to be on the safe side out there for right now. Uh, Jeff Peterson, raining in Dunlap, uh, 69, winds 23, gusting to 40. Thank you very much for that weather report. How am I? I could use uh, some more root beer at this point in time, trying to get back in the swing of things after a bit of time off uh, from earlier this weekend for some family stuff going on. Again, for tonight, uh, the threat has started to kind of expand a little bit where the marginal rain is for the potential of severe weather. The enhanced threat is gone the slight risk is gone. So yes, there will be, say, a 1 in 10 chance of picking up a stronger storm out there. And this is the latest within about the last hour from the Storm Prediction Center. So we will see that potential of a marginal threat, which again is not a severe weather outbreak. And that'll continue into the overnight hours going on through. Uh, tomorrow, the threat leaves us back to the east. And then we see just a generic possibility of some thunderstorms coming our way. And some of that could linger into and around Friday. Now, this forecast is several hours old for Friday. So hopefully we'll get an update overnight from the Storm Prediction Center as to what we may be expecting out there. And then we'll have a better idea as to uh, what's going on. Let's go ahead and run the numbers on our seven-day forecast and give you a better idea as to what we're going to be looking for, again, through the holiday weekend coming up. Uh, again, out and about for Good Friday services. It's going to be on the cooler side. There could be a shower mixed in with a bit of a thunderstorm out there. So we're not seeing too much of any uh, major threat of severe weather. And again, that marginal threat for early tomorrow morning should dissipate there as well. Good Friday could be wet, maybe a few storms out there. Holy Saturday, another chance of showers and some cool conditions. Now, the forecast for Easter Sunday, I haven't seen too many advertisements around here for various churches or requests for forecasts. Back where I come from in Kansas, there were outdoor Easter Sunday sunrise services. So if you are holding one of those, uh, or at least a gathering outside to celebrate Easter, Temperatures are going to be brisk early Sunday morning, so numbers are back into the mid to upper 40s as we go into very early Sunday morning. Temperatures for the rest of Easter Sunday, taking that walk to Emmaus, it looks like it is going to be, again, a beautiful day coming up, and numbers right about where they should be for this time of the year. The good news after that is once we get rid of the showers on Saturday, we start to see a much 
milder pattern shaping up all the way through next week. Little, if any, chance of any rainfall coming our way. And that's excellent news for next Tuesday as the hometown lookouts return to AT&T Field. Uh, taking on the Braves, and that again should be a glorious evening. 7.15 p.m. downtown Chattanooga, looking at some very nice conditions there for the home opener. So almost time for baseball in downtown Chattanooga. One of my favorite sports, looking forward to the return of baseball here after a decently long winter and now fi finally firmly into spring. Hopefully we get to enjoy a few more spring-like baseball-type nights before we get into uh, anything really huge out there where it comes to heat waves or anything like that. And that doesn't seem to be too far behind. Uh, not seeing anything huge right now. Close to 90 today, but not really all that close. So. Uh, fortunately, things will be, again, a little bit on the quieter side out there. Heading the kids off to school tomorrow morning, mostly cloudy, maybe a bit of a shower around, but I think it's mainly going to be mostly cloudy and very much on the mild side. And then we get into around uh, tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures will be very much milder with numbers back into about the mid to upper 70s. Won't be quite as warm as today, but there will also be that chance of maybe some a possibility of some thunderstorms out there. But not seeing a lot of major concerns again for right now so good news on that for tomorrow if you haven't gotten one of these yet i can't overemphasize this enough this is a life-saving piece of equipment as i understand it chattanooga hamilton county does not have uh too much in the way of tornado sirens around uh, because the uh, sequoia nuclear plant those sirens are used for emergency purposes to evacuate people in case there's an emergency uh, if, again, you need something to keep in contact with what's going on, this is the way to do it. And if you want to know how to program it, we can help you do that. These things, again, you can program them for whatever particular county you wish to be alerted for and whatever le level of warning. You don't have to be alerted for a blizzard warning in Bangor, Maine. You don't have to be alerted for a heat wave in San Diego, California. You can pick up just what you have around here, and that's it. You can even eliminate certain counties if you don't want them to show up. The signal that gets it p picked up by the antenna Again, that can be processed by the computer that runs this, and that can keep you safer by keeping you updated on what you want to be updated on. So if you haven't gotten one of these, pick them up. They're usually available at any good grocery store or around a good hardware store someplace. $25, $35 for something like this model. You can get bigger models with more accoutrements, more bells and whistles on them. Uh, it's a good opportunity to have something on your desk in your office to do so. Uh, to keep you informed and to again use the radio system if you have that on there for am fm if you want uh, tons of availabilities out there and ways to use them properly but this should be in every single home every single school every single place of worship and we can help you program it go to wdef.com weather if you'd like to know more about how to program it what to do and why these things are again decently important out there so again please uh, check it out for more details on that go ahead and send us in your uh, west shore home weather window picture of the day and of course we'll keep you updated on the rest of the forecast coming up again a little bit later so far for tonight again with let's, let's just do one more check of radar before we head on out of here time's about 9 30 eastern time and hardly a stroke of lightning showing up uh, in and around the area, so little, if anything, showing up where it comes to storms, some rain, northwest portions of Chattanooga, Sequatchie, Bledsoe County, getting a little bit of a lightning strike taking place from time to time, but that is about it. So fortunately, it looks like for tonight, the less we see of any severe weather, the more fine I am with the situation as it is. Nice to get sort of a night where we don't have to do any late night chasing, if at all possible. If it came to that, we would stay here and keep an eye on things. But for right now, it does not appear to be necessary. So good news on that uh, for this evening. So hopefully it stays that way. For tonight, again, decently quiet. As we get into tomorrow, we'll see some more chances of showers and thunderstorms. And, of course, Chip Chapman will have more on that forecast coming up bright and early at 5 a.m. Thursday. So stay tuned for more on that. Questions, concerns, comments, hit me up. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on several different social media places. Uh, you can find out more if you want to email me directly at aonic at wdef.com. And would love to have you along for the ride. Anything you'd like to see on here more than what we are featuring, please let us know. And we'll add that to the mix as we go throughout the next several days and weeks. Also, again, don't forget to check out our website, wdef.com. 
slash weather. We'll keep you advised of everything there. Live and direct from downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onick at the News 12 Studios. Keeping you updated with what's going on in and around the area. We'll have more on your forecast tonight on News 12 at 11. Chip again in the morning and stay tuned to WDEF.com for more information there. Stay tuned for a lot more later on tonight and throughout the next several days. We'll keep you advised as to weather in and around the Tennessee River Valley.